What's up Venom fans? Venom Man here tonight and tonight I'm going to be telling you another story. We're going to be talking about the largest snake on earth, the reticulated python. While we do that, I'm actually soaking my largest female reticulated python trying to get some stuff shed off of her. So we're going to try to work that off and play with her a little bit, check her out while I'm telling you this story. But let's talk a little bit about the story. What is the story about? This story is about the biggest mistake I've ever made while working with reptiles. I want to start off by saying the reticulated pythons, I think, are the gentle giants. With enough knowledge, with enough care, I think they can make great pets. They're definitely not a beginner, by no means. But with that being said, they can be very gentle, very docile. But I also strongly believe that every animal has its own personality and its own character traits. And I do believe that this snake is the worst snake I've ever worked with. She was a very big reticulated python. That brings up another thing. Let's talk about reticulated pythons real quick. Reticulated pythons are actually the longest snake on earth. Some people say they can get over 30 feet long. Now back in 1910, Theodore Roosevelt along with the Bronx Zoo, actually offered a cash reward of $50,000 to anybody who could bring in a live, healthy, reticulated python that was over 30 feet long. And no one has ever cashed in on that reward. So with that being said, I think it's safe to assume that they don't actually get that big. But they do get anywhere from 22 to maybe 25 feet. And the one we were working with during this story is about 20 feet long. So let's go ahead and get on into it. <sighs> Hold up one second. Do you ever just feel like you're becoming an old man? Speaking of old men, Nick from Wicked Wildlife, one of my favorite YouTubers and good mate from Australia, is turning 30 on the 28th of June. And his one goal is to reach 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Can you guys make that happen? I know I always ask you for subscribers, and if you're not subscribed to me, you should be. But you need to go check out his channel. I love watching his videos while I work. I just put in my headphones and let it play. He's so smart. He's taught me so many things. He has awesome Australian wildlife. So go check out his channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So the snake that we're working the shed off of is about a 14 foot yellow headed reticulated python. This is my big female. She got a little bit of stuck shed, so we're gonna go ahead and work that off. But this story takes place about two years ago. There was one snake about 20 feet long and the other snake was about 17 feet long. These two snakes were caged together inside a very large enclosure. This enclosure was big enough to actually walk into. So with that being said, the snake in this story that we're going to be talking about the most is the smaller of the two. She's the 17 footer. And I honestly don't know what her issue was. She was a real grumpy pants. For some reason, I, I don't know if she was dropped. I don't know if she just was always hungry. I don't know what her deal was, but she would never leave you alone. The second that cage door came open, she was ready. She was flying out of that cage at you. She had about a six foot strike span, so staying out of that alone was a real chore. Now the other larger reticulated python, I would just walk into the enclosure and work around her cleaning, watering, doing whatever. But this other one was just, just horrible. So with that being said, the 17 foot reticulated python was always very food aggressive. There was no turning this off. So I would actually go in, the second I would open up the cage, I would normally just let her fly all the way out at me and hit the floor. Just let her land on the floor and then continue to chase me around, whatever. I would get her pushed off of me. I would go into the enclosure with the larger reticulated python, close the door behind me and work in there with her and she was cool with it, whatever while the other snake still was guarding the door, just waiting for me to come back out. I had never seen anything like it. I'm like, if I can just get her off the ground, I can probably snap her out of this food mode or whatever kind of mode she's in. I was wrong. It just doesn't work like that. So one day I had some rats that were thawed. I was getting ready to feed. So I went in, opened up the enclosure, and right before I got the enclosure open, the 17 foot reticulated python bit a hold of the head of the 20 foot reticulated python and started constricting. 
I'm like, this isn't good because the 20 foot reticulated python was pulling back. And if you know anything about reticulated python teeth, they're actually recurved into their mouth. So pulling away from them just slashes. It will cut you open so bad it's not even funny. So I see this, I'm like, oh no, I can't let this happen. I can't let her rip up the face of this big retic. So I went ahead and I grabbed her behind the neck. And the second I pinned her like that, she let go of the bigger retic. It worked. But what happened at the same time, she coiled one coil around my arm and got one coil around my leg and pretty much put them together. So I still have her behind the neck, but she's constricting me at this point. So I am thinking, how am I going to get this snake off? If you get bit by a large constrictor, a lot of times you can pour like rubbing alcohol into the mouth and into the eyes and nose area of the snake and the snake will actually let go of you because of course they hate the taste of it. But she's not biting me. Her mouth isn't open. I don't think it, it, it might work. It di I didn't come to me. I didn't think of it. My, my bad, you know, whatever. So I have backup on hand. Backup starts trying to keep her from coiling any farther. She has three good coils around my leg and arm. I still have one free arm and one free leg. So I back up away from the enclosure to get away from the 20 footer just in case I can't have two constrictions happen at once. That wouldn't be good. So I go ahead and back away from the other snake and start trying to keep her from going any farther. I know if I fall, it's not gonna be good. If she gets me down to the ground, I'm pro it's gonna be a battle, right? So I'm trying to keep to my feet the best that I can. And it's a real struggle, needless to say. I mean, the power of this snake is unreal. It is intense. So my partner, my backup, starts grabbing coils and trying to pull them off of me. That, that is not working. She is definitely stronger than he is. He can't get a single coil loose. So I know if I let go of her head, she's gonna turn around and bite me and coil me even more because she thinks I'm gonna eat this joker. She couldn't eat me, but she could definitely try. So with that being said, I hold on to her head tight enough to make sure that she doesn't get a hold of me. And as he grabs one of the coils around my leg, I think, man, if I could just rotate, like I've already tried helping him with my hands. I've, I've tried pushing the coils off and that's not working. So I'm like, maybe if I could rotate, we could rotate the snake off of me. If I just spin around and set a circle. So I start doing that and it's working, but it is the hardest thing I've ever done. It, it is like trying to push a car up a hill. It's just a lot of work. So we get that first coil off. So now we only have two coils to deal with. We get another coil off. It's about all we can do. And I'm sweating. Not because of the fear of getting constricted, just because of the overall force exerted trying to get the snake off of me. So we get another coil off. Now we're down to one coil. I'm like, if we get this one coil off from around my leg, we'll be good. We both had cell phones. We could have called for help. Could have had help there in a couple minutes. Wouldn't have been a big deal. I don't like worrying people. I don't like panicking people. At this point, it's still within range of my capabilities to handle. And I always like handling stuff myself if I can. So that last coil, we're working, we're pulling, we're grabbing, we're working, we get it off. We get that last coil off of my leg. Now I only have that coil around my arm. She keeps trying to hike her body back up and get another coil around my leg, but we keep pushing her down. I'm staying far enough away from the large chunk of her body that it's not really causing an issue. So now I have her behind the head and she's got the one coil around my arm. So I get the one coil loosened up enough to where I can sit there and I just loft her to get her off of me. And I'm jumping back at the same time and she's striking. I've never seen a snake strike as you're putting them down like that. It was impressive. Like I said, she has like a six foot strike span. So getting out of that six foot strike span. <sighs> so that right there was the closest I've ever been to a bad outcome with a reptile. I mean, that was not good. I mean, everything went wrong. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have grabbed her behind the head while she had grabbed the other snake. 
I should have looked out for my best interest. But in my head, I can't let that other snake get ripped up like that. You know, I mean, those teeth are fierce. I mean, they are not anything I want inside of me, let alone another animal that I care about. So now she's on the floor, and I have an unthawed rat. So I go ahead and hand her an unthawed rat. She bites it, kind of coils it, you know, small body of a rat, huge body of a snake. And I just kind of pick her up and start putting her back into the cage because her mouth is, you know. That was work. This snake was unreal. I've never, in my opinion, I've never worked with a snake that dangerous. You know, every snake in every situation runs and tries to get away. But this snake seriously thought that she could eat me. And uh, it was crazy. I mean, like I said, the 20 footer was a sweetheart. Everyone I've ever worked with since then, sweetheart. You know, occasionally we'll have our days. Feeding mistakes happen sometimes. You know, I'll get lit up. Uh, sometimes aggression, you know, I'll have them cornered and they get nervous and they bite me. That sometimes happens. I'd rather get bit than to stub my toe in all seriousness. But man, when they bite and coil, or when you grab them behind the head and they coil, it's unreal. Now, when I watch the documentaries of these guys down into the Amazon that grab that giant anaconda behind the head and pull it up out of that swamp, so much more respect. Those guys are built. I don't understand how much strength they have to have to do that. But anyway, that's my story. Hopefully you enjoyed this beautiful retick. We got most of that shed off of her. She's looking really good. I like that. To the best of my knowledge, she is going down to a zoo that a friend of mine owns. I've had her for probably three months now. She had mites when I first got her, so I got her over the mites, and I got her back in good shape. She could be a little heavier maybe, but in my personal opinion, a fat snake is less healthy than a skinnier snake. In the wild, you see them, they're more streamlined. They're not super morbidly obese. So I think she's got pretty good weight. But if all goes well, I will be going down to the zoo and we will visit her occasionally because I didn't even get to do an unboxing video with this beautiful girl because I mean she had mites. I didn't want to bring the mites out and get them all over my stuff. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that story. Make sure that you go over, subscribe to Nick's channel. Don't forget, he is awesome dude. Deals with all sorts of Australian wildlife. Really smart, has taught me a lot and I really appreciate it, Nick, if you're watching this. Subscribe to him, show him some love. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. See you again here soon.